this evening to Hallfield School. Uh, it's a great honour and a pleasure to have you as our very first uh, guest speaker for Hallfield Insight. So thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you, Mr Morrow. It's my pleasure. So tell me about your, your childhood. When did uh, music uh, become uh, an interest to you? Were your parents musical? H how, how did it all begin? Well, I was grew up in actually a slum okay. in the yeah. south of China. And my parents are both um, working class and have a very humble background. And so my parents actually been through the Cultural Revolution. So my mom is very artistic, but she never had the opportunity to live her dream. So she want to you know, pass on her dream to me. And uh, so when I was four, they decided to buy me my first piano. And that means my dad had to sell his motorbike to wow. raise the fund for my first piano. So I'm very, very grateful um, to my parents' sacrifice. Um, hence, I think you know, the education is so important. And, and I think my children now is very, very lucky you know, to be studying in Hallfield and then have the opportunity to do so many amazing uh, activities. That, that's a huge sacrifice, isn't it, that your, your father made? Uh, did, did that bring its own pressure? Did you feel you had to practice uh, and become uh, fantastic at playing the piano because he'd made such a huge sacrifice? Uh, not really. I think my parents are quite relaxed and open-minded. I think they just want to offer me the best opportunity that they could. But uh, they're always, I mean, they're not overly ambitious. They just think if you, you work hard, you need to try. And um, if, if you can make a secondary school teacher, and that's what they're aiming at. But what they didn't expect is, you know, I really fall in love with this instrument and I obviously work very hard for it and I'm very fortunate to have lots of help along my way. So um, from, from, you know, the backstory of the Cultural Revolution in China to now playing in some amazing venues of the world and I do feel very, very lucky. <laughs> Because yes. she's self-taught to play the accordion wow. and she loved dancing. She's still dancing nowadays. Uh, but my dad, he no, he, he knew very little of, of music, and they never travel. You know, when I was in um, the UK, and in I think two thousand and eight, I had this European tour. So I uh, invite my parents. I bought them tickets, and that's my dad first time being on an airplane in his life. Wow. How, how did you feel when your parents had arrived at Heathrow and you, and you met them? I mean, you must have felt just so proud. What, what did your parents say to you? Uh, the Chinese parent doesn't say much. Okay. In fact, after my first, uh, the first stop actually started at the Birmingham Town Hall. So they have been to the concerts, but they do not speak a word of English. So they just see lots of people there to support me. And afterward, they are very, very quiet. So I do ask them, I said, Dad, what do you think? And my dad said, oh, uh, I pinched myself really hard, so I didn't fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my parents are from Yorkshire, so I think parents from China and parents from Yorkshire seem to have the same attitude to praise towards their children, <laughs> yeah. so I, I think we've got a lot in common. But, you know, they must have felt huge pride, even if they couldn't express that. I think all of those sacrifices in terms of your lessons, selling a motorbike for the piano, uh, you know, going to visit another country, first time outside China, they must have realised that uh, your skill, your talent was, was much more than average. Yeah, I think <laughs> deep down they are very proud. I'm Just sure a different culture, they're yes. very shy to express themselves. Yes. So yeah, I think there's nothing can replace what my parent has done for me. So I'm very, very grateful. Just think about the number of hours of practice, you know, I, I try to encourage my children to play an instrument and uh, I think they gave it up after a couple of years. 
what made you keep going? Because you you must as a as a young uh, as a girl and as a young woman have thought, do you know what? I I could be doing something more fun with my time than practicing six to eight hours a day. What what gave you that sort of seed of determination to to keep going? I think that comes to two things. Firstly, is the hunger. I think that's what the modern children lack. Because my son, I couldn't let him practice 10 minutes a day. So I think when everything is on a plate and served to you, you have no desire to, to you know, when I live in such a poverty, I know that's my way to earn a better living. And that hunger and that desire in my belly, that drive me to great things. Secondly, I think it's the passion. Because once I fall in love with the music, I realize what amazing world the music can offer. And that certainly the hard work become easy. When you love something, that is not hard work anymore. What does music bring to your life? I mean, obviously it's success, it's a career, it's an escape from uh, your childhood poverty, but uh, on a more sort of emotional level, what, 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 does it, what does it give you? I think music become my identity because that's what I learn and what I know and what I'm passionate about. And all I do uh, in my daily life is involve music making or creating music or helping youngster to become professional musician. So that's part of me now, I can't take that away. And um, my aspiration, you know, partly is to help more young people because they come to a stage that, you know, I, I achieve great things and I want to help more people to achieve great things as well. Fantastic. What, what do you think, uh, we in Birmingham, what, what can we learn from the, the Chinese community or your work as an ambassador? Yeah. Well, I think we have a lot to learn from each other. Yes. The Chinese as a nation, we are very hardworking. I think the work ethic is like second to none. Because now I teach in the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire and I get in touch with lots of students from across the world. We have you know, probably 70 different countries come from. But I always notice the Asian students are always willing to work really hard and they will be the first to arrive in the practice room, the last to leave. So I think that's something that we can, we can learn. Um, but I think we can also learn from our uh, counterpart, the UK counterpart, by probably express ourselves better because the Chinese are we're very quiet. We did a lot of things in the background, but we are not very good to voice and express our feeling. So I think music as a universal language is actually a unique way to bring people and connect people together. So I want to use my art and to help people to connect and to understand each other better. Thinking about the last 18 months and uh, COVID and the closure of sort of theatres and, and concert halls and so on, what do you think we've lost in the last sort of uh, 18 months or you might have lost that uh, it is so needed? Um, I think mainly it's that connection with, because it's nothing like live performance, that connection and it hit you straight away. You can, you know, with the internet, with all this technology, you can sit at home but there's something very special about life of women. Field, uh, just starting out learning the piano, what advice would you give me? Mm. Um, I think you need to enjoy music because the practice, yes, uh, needs discipline and you need to you know, devote 
a little bit time, maybe five minutes, just five minutes to start with, not too daunting with the 45 minutes, but little steps and then try to start with something you enjoy. For example, if you already know the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or any nursery <laughs> rhyme, and try to find it on the piano. You don't need a lot of you know help or tuition, but then you can hear something that you're familiar and then you can recreate it. And I think it is a creation that inside us that we need to bring out. And then once you start to find that joy, you will eat it and then you will be hooked and hopefully you will lead to great things. That's fantastic, Didi. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank very you. Much.